Hi, thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to show with you, show with you, show you. Hi, thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you is how to test your Flutter app with Firebase in the most cost effective way using Firebase Emulator. So for those who don't know what Firebase Emulator is, it is basically a Firebase that is run on your local host. Moreover, you can perform any testing or QA or quality assurance without touching production data. So this is a very safe way for you to actually do a lot of, you know, things that you want to do inside your app. So for example, you can connect your Firestore emulator to safely read and write documents in testing, which we will do later on. So for now, it supports hosting, cloud functions, database and Firestore, including the PubSub emulator over here or the cloud functions over here. So one thing to take note is that if you guys think that you want to do a self-hosted rather than using the Firebase or Google Cloud platform to host your Firebase service, uh, do not do that because they are only built for accuracy, not performance or security. So this is an unsafe way for you to do your own self-hosting. So just FYI. So I have with me an example app that uses the Firebase emulator in Flutter. So this basically generates a list of names. And for example, if I want to add Add a name called Charlie I press the add button over here and let's see how it looks like and you can see that Charlie has been added into our Firebase that is not on our actual Firebase account but rather it's inside our local host and if I were to clear all data for example like this you could see that all of the data has been deleted and all of this is running in our local Host. So before I get started with the tutorial, I wanted to say that this was a really, really huge feature that is very helpful if you want to build your apps in Firebase because in order for you to have some emulator, you probably have to create another Firebase project in order for you to run the Firestore database. So that's why having this feature allows you to safely test all of your data, your mock data, and then you can also not only run Firestore, but you also can run cloud functions, which is very, very time consuming if you were to push it live on production or a Firebase project. That's why I feel that the Firebase emulator is really, really helpful if you really want to have a better and safer way for you to test out your cloud functions and also your Firestore data workflow. So with that said, this is actually going to save you a lot of money because you don't have to read or write through your Firestore because Firestore charge according to your reads and writes. That's why having this emulator will really save you a lot of money especially if you are working in a company unless you are under the Google startup program and then you probably have a lot of credits to burn but either way if you don't have the opportunity for you to be in a Google startup then having this Firebase emulator really really will save you a lot of money so with that said let's get started with the tutorial all right so the first thing that you need to do is to have your cloud Firestore under your dependency under your pub spec YAML file so with that that's all you need for your PubSpec YAML. So I have with me here a very simple app. Basically, this is a list view that contains a list of names. So you have your scaffold, your material app, and then inside your scaffold, you have a floating action button that has an icon of an ad at the bottom right. And then in your app bar, we have a simple title with the Firebase emulator example text. And lastly, we have a list view with a children that is inside a for in loop that goes through a list of names. So it's a global variable. And then it has containers with the colors of the accents. And this is just a very simple algorithm. So where basically if you are the next index of the element in the list, then you are multiplied by two. Basically, I want to have a simple way to have a different color for my different elements inside my list. And then it is a centered text with the style as a headline of three. So it'll be very, very big for you guys to see. The next thing that we need to do is to initialize a Firebase project inside our Flutter project. So you have to install the Firebase CLI or the command line interface using this command. And once you have installed the CLI, then you have to do Firebase init. So let's do that. So type in Firebase init 
and you could see at the last option there is this emulators set up local emulators for firebase features so let's select that with pressing space and then press enter then it will say which project you should use so for myself i'm going to use an existing project if you don't have an existing project you can create a new project so i press enter and then i'm going to use this success page project and then the next thing is that you see this emulator setup so i will only do fire store so press enter and then which port do you want to use so i'm going to use the default 8080 and then i would enable the emulator ui so which port do you want to use for the emulator ui i'm going to leave empty to use any available port and then would you like to download the emulator so the default will be n which is no and i will say no as well so now you have initialized your firebase project inside your flutter project with the emulators in it so how do you check for it go to your file explorer and then you see that there is this firebase rc file basically this is the project that you want the default to point at so my default firebase project is called success page and then the next thing is let's choose the firebase.json and this is where what service we have enabled inside our firebase project so under our firebase.json we have our emulator service that points to our file store and ui service so once that's done, let's run our Firebase emulator. So you can type in Firebase and you can type in emulators and then put a colon and type in start. Press enter. This will load your local Firebase emulator. So in order for you to see the emulator UI, you can just click on this. You can command and click. And this will show your Firebase emulator suite GUI or graphics user interface so let's click on the overview and this will actually show the different services that you can actually activate if you want to use the firebase emulator suite so we have the firestore database functions pubsub and hosting so currently we are just using firestore so the next thing is that we want to point our flutter project to the firebase emulator local host that we have currently running right now all right so let's go to main.dart and the first line of code we need to add is this thing called widgets flutter binding dot ensure initialized so basically this means that we want to bind or connect the code to our native code before we run our app so what kind of code do we want to connect before we run our app basically the firestore settings so if you were to go to the documentation for the emulator suite or the firebase emulator you could see that you have to add in these lines of code in android ios or web so for Flutter, since we have the cloud Firestore, we are going to do something similar as what we have inside, for example, this Android. So you can type in firestore.settings and then for our host. So if we were to go back to our Firebase documentation, it says that our host should be localhost 8080. One thing to point out is that I'm following the iOS-Swift kind of settings because I'm using a iOS simulator. So I'm not sure, but if you were to use Android, I would recommend you to use these settings instead. So for iOS, type in this local host, so you can copy this and paste it over here. All right, the next thing is that we are going to put our persistence enable as false. And lastly, we're going to put the SS enable as false as well. And that's about it for the iOS Swift. So at the same time, you could see that the settings is a future void. So what we need to do is that we need to put some async into the void main function. So inside the void main function, type in async. And then that means our settings, we can put the await keyword. So how do we know that this setting has been enabled successfully? So what we can do is for any future, we can put in the then method. So I will just put in a very simple print connected statement. And then if it's not connected, then I will just put in a catch error. I'll put a break off that prints not connected. So now let's save this. And if you were to run this. All right. So if you open up the debug console, you could see that there is this flutter connected message over here. So that means our Firestore setting has been connected to our Firebase emulator. All right. So we are one step closer to testing out our Firestore. So we can just go to the Firestore and now we're going to play around with this Firebase Emulator example app over here. 
All right, the next thing that we can do is we can wrap this list view with a stream builder. So click on stream builder. And then for our object, we're going to put a very simple query snapshot. So for our stream, we are going to create this collection called names. So you can type in filestore.instance.collection and then we are going to have our path to be names and then at the same time we are going to return the snapshots so our builder has a context and snapshot so if you are familiar with stream builders or any async so what we need to do is we need to add in a loading widget using a circular progress indicator so the first thing is that we're going to put in a if statement so if the snapshot doesn't have data then it will return a centered circular progress indicator so the next thing is that if there was a empty list of names then we are going to return a simple text widget that says no data found so the next thing is that we're going to create a variable called document so this points to the snapshot.data.documents so at the same time from my personal experience sometimes the data is null so the next thing is that we're going to put a simple if statement so if documents is equal to null or documents is empty then we are going to return a center child text that says no data found and now if we save this you can see that there is no data found because currently inside our firebase emulator suit there is no data found now with that we can add a very simple function that creates a simple document in a collection called names so let's create a function called add name and there's no arguments and this is a it's a simple void function and then we will type in five star dot instance dot collection and this will point to the names collection and this will then add a document which is a map that has the key name and the value billy and then at the same time we can add this then method so we can just print success and then if there's an error then we just catch the error using a break off and then we will say print field so this is just a very simple way to see whether your firestore add method is successful or it failed so with our add name function we are going to add it inside our floating action button so you can type in add name if we were to save this and if we were to add something into the collection then the list view will be rendered if not then there will be a no data found let's put the firebase emulator suite over here and if i were to press this add you could see that the list has been rendered so inside the firebase emulator suite it doesn't render for some reason so we just need to refresh it and you can see that under our names collection there is a document named billy so this is not exactly the data that we are looking for because currently we are rendering the hard-coded names that we have earlier created so we are going to create a new names variable so we can type in final names and this will be from the documents that we have currently right now so then we're going to use the map method and under our map method let's put here document so type in document dot data so this points to the map that we have earlier on over here so now we need to just get the key name so let's put in the key name so if you hover over the names you could see that it returns an interable dynamic so we want a list of string so first what we can do is we can have this method called to list and now you can see the names is list dynamic but we want to make this dynamic into a string so we can cast the data name to a string by just typing as string so by typing this you see that the document.data will return a list of string so if you hover over it you could see that this is a list of string so make sure that your casting is correct according to what you have set over here so for example if you were to add the name as a boolean and then you cast it as a string and then it will have an error so make sure that you have a correct casting and now if we save this you could see that our name Billy has been rendered instead of the Harris and Alice so we can comment this out to make sure there isn't any confusion so now currently our names has been rendered correctly so if you were to for example test it out with another name called Alice 
and then if you were to save this and now let's see the magic happen if you were to press this plus button you could see that Alice has been added to the fire store at the same time you can update so I'm going to update inside the Firebase emulator and change the name Billy to Bob and if you were to save this you could see that it renders in our Flutter app lastly if you were to clear all data and just delete all the data you could see that there is no data found that's about it for the Firebase emulator example that we have so I showed you a snippet of what you can do inside the Firebase emulator so like I said earlier, this is a really good cost-effective way for you to test out your Firestore or Firebase services inside your Flutter app project. That's about it. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this video, subscribe down below. And comment down on one thing that you want me to go through on the Firebase emulator suite. That's about it. Stay safe and all the best. Bye-bye. Flutter shirt.